Randy Vincent from Algonquin Outfitters here with Dan Watson from uh, Huntsville Festival of Arts. So Dan, tell us all about these canoes here. Sure, so these canoes are part of the Group of Seven Canoe Mural Project that the Huntsville Festival of the Arts uh, organized this summer. Uh, as a lot of people know, 2020 is the 100th anniversary of the formation of the Group of Seven. So we wanted to do something that would celebrate their work and the importance of uh, them to our community. So we uh, approached uh, Jerry Lantain, who's uh, known for his murals around town here in Huntsville, and uh, we said, what about doing seven different canoes, each one celebrating uh, one of the members of the Group of Seven, and he said, absolutely yes. And, uh, and we've been painting them all summer, and here they are on display in uh, River Mill Park. Excellent. I, I, I hear that these are actually going to be uh, available for auction. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so we're very excited to announce that we're, these canoes are going to be part of the Algonquin Outfitters Paddle Art Auction, the 2021 edition. Uh, we're thrilled that we can partner with uh, that a great business and this great cause and that these can be auctioned off and uh, to raise some money for some uh, some art arts organizations in the area, some much needed funds and it's going to be fantastic. I can't wait to see them. I can't wait to bid on them. <laughs> Excellent. I know there's a lot of people out there that are going to be anxious to bid on these. They're all beautiful. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, I'm Jerry Lantain, and I am the artist that was uh, hired by the Huntsville Festival of the Arts to do a really awesome project this year. Um, and it was to celebrate the 100th anniversary of the Group of Seven, the original Group of Seven members. Uh, and. 2020 is the 100th anniversary of their first art exhibition and a group as a show. And uh, Dan Watson from the Huntsville Festival of the Arts came up with this awesome idea to paint seven canoes, one for each original member of the group of seven. That created a bit of a challenge though because canoes are long like this and most of the group of seven works are in a four by five size range format, almost square. So what I decided to do, and I usually picked one side of the canoe to start on, and I would center the, the picture of the artist in about the middle, and then ad lib on the sides and move it out uh, in both directions on the sides. And then do the other side of the canoe. So I'd work in stages in the drawings. So each side of the canoe is different from the other side of the canoe. And um, Sometimes one side might be better than the other because I was really getting the swing of things on the other side. Anyway, this is a piece, um, it's uh, my interpretation of J.E.H. McDonald's painting and it's called North Country near Burke's Falls, which is over there somewhere. But uh, this is a beautiful little piece and it's funny because, you know, I have, you know, looked at a lot of Group of Seven works uh, over my a lifetime as an artist and I had yet to see this particular version. I found it online. I've never seen it in a book or a print and it is called North Country near Burke's Falls which is pretty cool because that's extremely local to us here in Huntsville and the Huntsville Festival of the Arts. And I can move on to the next canoe which is right over here. And this canoe is an interpretation of a painting by Frank Johnson or Franz Johnson as he became to be known. He is uh, again one of the original members of the group of seven um, but strangely enough he was the first and only member of the group of seven to actually quit. Um, when the group of seven started in the early 1900s, so 1920 was their first show, they got such bad 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 publicity and press and bad reviews and it really was potentially going to damage their career as artists. So Frank Johnson, who painted this particular painting in about in about this area here, is about his original painting. Um, and he left the group, but he is an original member, and they've always considered his work as part of the Group of Seven Masterpieces. Now, this painting I also found online because I had never, ever, ever seen it before. And this is the only painting I've done that I have no idea what the actual title is. Um, yeah, I just... I don't know what the title is. And if someone does know, because I've never seen this painting in a book or that one, but at least we know the title of that one. But let us know at the Huntsville Festival of the Arts. This particular canoe 
is a reproduction of a very famous painting by Lauren S. Harris. And he is one of the found, well, they all were founding members, but he's one of the founder, founders of the Group of Seven. Very interesting man, Mr. Harris. Um, this is his painting, or my version of it, I should say, Baffin Island. Um, and one thing I will point out, um, when we did these paintings, really interestingly enough, we actually used marine grade paint. So we used boat paint. Um, we talked to our local favorite canoe um, specialist that we know, uh, John Gall from Johnny's Boat Shop and he helped us out and, and got the paints for us. And he had said that no one really uses them like this. So this is the first time as far as they know that anyone's actually kind of done artwork with their marine paint. Um, it was limited in colors. So I wasn't able to get the kind of vibrant colors that I could get with artist colors because they just don't have the same kind of reds, blues and yellows um, to work with. So I was limited on my palette, which, you know, I wasn't able to, to nail the paintings perfectly. So that gave me a little bit of artistic freedom, which I actually enjoyed because I was able to uh, move the, the paint much more fluid and much more better than when I normally do any kind of reproduction work. But yes, um, a lot of people came by and were really fascinated with this. This is the first one we did. Um, and it's a Lauren Harris painting and it's such an iconic image, like everybody really loves it. So um, yeah, this canoe, is a reproduction of an awesome painting by another original member of the Group 7, Franklin Carmichael. Uh, he was a master of watercolor works and uh, this painting uh, is originally a watercolor. So my version is not a watercolor version. It's actually, again, as we spoke about earlier, it's a marine grade paint, which was an oil paint, interestingly enough. And again, you can see the wonderful Huntsville Festival of the Arts was the sponsor of this whole awesome project. And this particular painting by Mr. Carmichael is called Mirror Lake. And if you go along it this way, you'll see that uh, he painted these great grand images and then reflected them in the water. It was a challenge to do this painting. There's a lot of smaller details in it, all the little wisps of color and stuff like that. The other thing about the marine paint, which is also interesting, is it dries super fast. Even though it's an oil paint, it dries like fast. So you have a small amount of time to work with, which also, I had these big cans of paint, so I couldn't pour out big gobs of it because I'd waste it when it all dry. So I had to use little tiny bits of paint at a time. And then we started to use something called a, a varnish, like a spire varnish, which is a see-through paint, a clear coat. And we mixed that into the paints and that helped it move along even nicer. So I got these really beautiful fluid flowing lines by using that technique of adding in a clear coat, which actually uh, gave a little bit more length to the dry time of some of the paint. Um, and then we were able to do really cool stuff like uh, put a base color in and then come back afterwards and tweak it by adding a little high red of a glaze or just different kind of glazes to really push the colors up and around. This was a fun painting. It took a long time to do this one. This one took the most amount of time of all of them. Most of the paintings I was able to do in about three days, uh, three working days. Um, but this one, um, we ran into weather problems near the end of the summer and we didn't have enough time to complete it. But even that, uh, that being said, I probably put way more hours in this one, maybe uh, four or five days in this one as opposed to the other ones. There's a lot of neat detail. I like this one too. Okay, this is, again, my version of an iconic painting by A.Y. Jackson, who is really one of the fun members of the Group of Seven. And this is called Night Pine Island. And uh, this is when I first start to use the glaze. And you can see in the sky, when I use the glaze, it really picks up. It, because what I did was I had first a sort of a dark blue color down. And then I came in afterwards with these light wispy blues and popped and picked it all up afterwards. And also another technique I was able to figure out by using this paint, because it was drying so fast, I put all these base tones in. So when you first, if you had come by this painting when, you, when I first made it, um, all these rocks were super bright orange and this water was super black and it looked really bizarre, but what I wanted to do was capture, I don't know if you can see this, but see all the little bits of orange that still show through the paint? That's kind of the technique that I was trying to imitate of the artist that made this, A.Y. Jackson, because he kind of sort of dry brushed or scrubbed his paint and pushed it across the canvas and had this really interesting technique to it. So I was actually using the paint 
when it was almost dry sometimes too. And you can see because I was scraping it across so not all the paint came off the brush and it, it just made this nice draggy effect where you still get some of the background paint showing through, which is exactly what I was trying to do. Oh, and with the water, so you can see there's uh, reflections of stars in the water. And the same thing, this was all pitch black water and it, it looked really weird, but I started dragging the super dark blue down it in the same process with kind of a, almost a dry brush. And it, it just made these beautiful blues, um, like the original painting almost, and these highlights of where the stars are and stuff like that, but letting the black of the, of the, of the, of the water really come through so you get that depth in the water. Yeah, this is a marvelous painting by A.Y. Jackson. Um, I stretched it out really, really far. This canoe is by Arthur Liz. Whoa, wait a minute. No, this canoe is by me. But the painting is a reproduction of two of Arthur Lismer's paintings. Of course, Arthur Lismer, one of the original members of the Group of Seven, um, and um, a friend of Tom Thompson's, although Tom was not a member of the Group of Seven because he passed away before. They actually became the Group of Seven. He died in 1917, and they didn't have their first show until 1920, but he really did inspire them. And in fact, this particular painting is uh, a painting that he did in Algonquin Park. And I wouldn't doubt if he was on the same camping trip or probably sitting beside Tom Thompson the day he painted this one, because it's very much in the style of Tom Thompson's paintings. And it was done early, this, this version of this uh, uh, Algonquin Park scene. Uh, beautiful, but very, very indicative of, of, of um, Tom Thompson's uh, style in terms of these, you know, beautiful brush strokes and hit quicks and nice hit quicks. Now, Arthur Lismer ended up moving away from that sort of choppy kind of painting and ended up developing his own style. So um, I combined this other painting down here. This is a piece of a, a shoreline of a, a, a iconic painting by Arthur Lismer of Georgian Bay. Now. They had a friend on Georgian Bay and they always went to this guy's cottage. His name is Dr. McCallum. And they always hung out there. Um, well, not always, but they were invited up in the summer times and they did a lot of painting there. Um, so when I first started this canoe, I wasn't sure which painting I was gonna do first or which painting I was even gonna do. And I was wondering, how am I gonna do? Oh, how am I gonna put this painting on here? Cause it's such a long, long thing and the painting's this wide. So when I came down the street, I saw a reflection and I saw exactly this reflection coming off the road and I went oh my god it looks like the trees in this painting and I perfect so then I knew exactly how to paint the painting and I thought wait a minute I'm gonna put the other painting in so I got two Arthur Lismer paintings in one here and I've added his Georgian Bay uh, trees and rock painting as an iconic bookend uh, to this particular canoe Arthur Lismer solid guy now this canoe is by Frederick Varley. Well, again, I did it again. This canoe is by me, but it's a version of Frederick Varley, one of his paintings of Georgian Bay. Uh, as I said, they spent a lot of time in Georgian Bay uh, doing painting because they had a um, patron there who was Dr. McCallum and he had a cottage on Go Home Bay. So this is more than likely right in that immediate area of the Go Home Bay. What a beautiful, beautiful sunset. Uh, really striking colors. I did my best to match up the colors. Now when I picked this particular painting, um, and if you recall earlier, I mentioned that there, I, I didn't have the same kind of colors available in the um, uh, boat paint, in the canoe paint, uh, marine grade paints. So I looked for colors that were similar to the ones I had and I found this particular painting. I thought, perfect, this is perfect. So this too is a very early painting by uh, Frederick Barley. And again, this is extremely influenced by Tom Thompson's style. Now, um, everybody had met Tom, they all worked with Tom, most of them had worked with Tom, but they'd all at least painted with him and most of them had gone into Algonquin Park and worked with him in Algonquin Park. And so there's a good chance that Tom was here uh, this week when they painted this painting on Georgian Bay. Uh, beautiful screaming sunset, you got these beautiful oranges that change into these greens and fade off into the darkness of night up here, which is kind of really nice. And it's augmented by the silhouettes of the iconic Canadian uh, pine trees um, that sort of became a fixture of the Group of Seven work. Now, 
The other interesting thing about this painting is I finally figured out a way on this project to include Tom Thompson. Now, he was not an original member of the Group of Seven and had passed away uh, prior to them doing any shows. Um, so he didn't get a canoe. So we, we have seven canoes, but he doesn't get one of them. But when Mr. Varley was hanging out in Georgian Bay with Tom one afternoon, he painted Tom Thompson on the rocks. So this is a portion of a painting and it's, it's very similar in this area here. And he, he didn't have any detail in the face, so I didn't put any detail in the face. So I tried to make it look very similar to Mr. Varley's painting of Tom Thompson. So we included Tom in the project after all. So this is it, and it's uh, another painting by Varley. And it's about, Varley's, Varley's painting's about that big, the one of Tom, uh, sitting on the rocks in Georgian Bay almost probably in the exact same area when he was painting this painting maybe the same afternoon or maybe the same weekend or a couple of months later so wish i knew <laughs>